Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for a special edition of One Take, shot on location in Morristown, Tennessee, where Sykes and Intuit just christened our newest location in our joint Prosperity Hub initiative. What's a Prosperity Hub, you ask? Well, today's guest, the Director of Global Partner Management at Intuit, joins me to explain just that. I speak with Bala Karthik Venkataramanan, or Bala for short. In our chat, we explore the what, why, and how of a company like Intuit partnering with outsourcers around the world who share their vision of promoting economic growth and sustainability within communities in need. Bala also shares why this mission is so important to him personally. So sit back and listen up to learn how Intuit and its partners are powering prosperity around the world. And thank you for tuning in to One Take. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, One Take fans, listeners, watchers. Uh, welcome back. I am thrilled. Today's episode is a really special one on multiple levels. First and foremost, it's because we're on site. We're on site at a delivery center in Morristown, Tennessee. And I won't waste any more time introducing my guest. My guest is Bala Karthik. Bala Karthik from Intuit, whose last name he challenges everyone to say, and I'm going to try it. It's been Kacharamanan. You did a great job. Yeah. Um, Bala, thank you so much for joining me on One Take. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's a privilege. So um, we're here for many reasons, but I want to start by uh, having a chat with Bala about his background um, and what his, you know, what his dreams were of what he wanted to be when he grew up, and then we'll come to why we're here. So first and foremost, Bala. Where'd you come from? What do you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> well, um, I'm from Bangalore in India. Okay. Uh, and I've been doing customer service all my life. And I uh, think that I'll probably do that for the rest of my life as well, uh, because this is where my personal passion is. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Bangalore is, is uh, what I call home. Um, and uh, that's where uh, my journey started. Okay. And what did you go to school for? Uh, well, I have uh, well business statistics uh, and accounting, okay. uh, and I also have a master diploma in uh, software programming. Uh, okay, very cool. And so, so describe your journey. So, so Bangalore. <coughs> I know that you've lived in various different uh, countries around the world, uh, and happened to also have worked at Sykes at one point in your career. So, so walk us through that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, right after, first I said that uh, I had a master diploma in software programming. I, I, I have to say that um, uh, although I, I went through that, uh, I, I never considered myself as a good programmer uh, because that's not where my passion was. Uh, my passion was always to do, to invent something, to do something new. Um, so right after I graduated, uh, me and a couple of my friends who were supposedly good at coding, uh, you know, uh, collectively, uh, we identified an opportunity to have a tech startup in Bangalore in those days. Um, and we were trying to solve a unique problem, which is, you know, during those days, that's when the, 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 the recruitment for, for software engineers was really booming. Sure. Um, and the recruiters were finding it really hard to kind of handle the number of applications that would come their way. So we created a platform that would um, be an online portal for individuals to upload their resume online. So you could completely eliminate these email transactions. Sure. Um, and also we offered a pre-screening service where instead of recruiters having to screen these individuals, again, the, today it's probably a very outdated idea, but back in 98, you know, that was really cool. Right. Um, so these were the two services that we offered. And obviously, you know, right out of the college, Bangalore, that point of time, uh, people did not understand the concept of technology startups, so things like funding and all that uh, became an interesting journey. So after about a year, uh, we had to make a decision to uh, kind of uh, uh, call this as an experiment and move on. Right. And that's when actually, fortunately for me, the call center started booming in India. Okay. Um, so one morning I saw an ad in a newspaper that said Sykes hiring customer service professionals okay. um, and I just walked in and, uh, and here I am after 20 years I'm glad that I saw the newspaper ad and walked in. The rest is history so okay so you had 
you had training that was rigorous and methodical and data oriented and software oriented, and then then you took a job where you had to pick up phones and deal with humans. Uh, I imagine. So so what was that transition? What did you learn in the, the sort of earliest stages in, in a call center? So first, it was nerve wracking. My first call, I still remember. Uh, my hands were trembling, and uh, you know, I, I guess I did a good job at the end of the call. But uh, you know, when I think about that moment, my heart still beats fast. Right. So it's uh, uh, you know, again, like any other job, it's easy to view something from outside. But then when you get into it, it's a completely different perspective. And again, you know, I was originally uh, I had aspirations to become a software engineer, and then from there, now I'm on to customer service. For the first few days. I, I wasn't sure whether this was even the right career decision. But then, you know, as I started talking to customers, I really felt like there is something that I'm connecting with this job, which is a couple of things. One, talking to uh, individuals in need um, and kind of empathizing with them and understanding what they're going through. And then two, to, you know, where, where, where possible, also be able to solve their problem, right? And every time, you know, every time when you hear the customer say, oh my God, this is exactly what I was looking for, right? right. And you give that answer, you feel that sense of accomplishment in every single call. Right. I don't think there is any other job on the planet that could give you the sense of accomplishment every 20 minutes. Because every 20 minutes, right. you, you answer and solve a customer's problem, right. you are making a difference in somebody's life. And so was that the pivot? I mean, you said you're, you're in customer service, you probably will be for the rest of your career. Is it it began there because you yeah, saw yeah the value you were absolutely that's one that's from an agent perspective but even as a leader if you think about any organization for that matter customer service is probably the only organization that uh, that uh, interacts with the customer frontline represents the brand right and i call it the moment of truth you know where a, uh, where a representative from your company is actually talking to the customer it's not the product team, not the marketing, not the sales, not the coders. Again, all due respect, I think every role plays a key uh, in bringing the organization's vision together. But I felt like this is the front line that represents the company. So both from an individual perspective as someone who's done this job, as well as you know, from a leadership perspective in terms of the criticality of the role. And especially today, Ian, when you think about the industry, a few years back, call centers slash customer service were considered as a mere cost center. But today, it's just part of what you have to offer right. in your product. I think that's spectacular it, it, because it's so interesting the amount of emphasis that enterprises put on creating really unique and differentiating customer that's experience right. happens, as you say, at that, at that point of interaction, it happens at the call. And so that's why I think it's so really you know, encouraging to hear your point of view that First of all, I think it's an amazing job. It's an amazing basic set of skills to acquire early on in anyone's career, to, to learn, to be empathetic, to feel the, that sense of accomplishment and solving problems and creating, creating a positive outcome, uh, which then materializes as experience, which right. any enterprise is looking for. Yep. So, okay, so that's spectacular. Um, so let's pivot from there. Okay, so you were you were a call center agent. You you took that first call. You worked your way up. Uh, what was next in your career? Well, Sykes again. You know, I've had uh, I was at Sykes for more than six years, and I had an incredible journey. Uh, you know, and I I, I won't be wrong if I say that you know Sykes kind of laid the foundation for my customer service career, um, and it opened uh, unlimited possibilities. So I was an agent. You know, I became a team manager. That's when I, I you know, got into people management. Right. Um, and then I was also managing a, a very large operations for one of the technology clients. Okay. And then uh, at, at one point, uh, my, my coach and my manager at that point of time identified that I could actually get into Six Sigma. So Sykes actually helped me get my Six Sigma Black Belt certification. Okay. And the last role I had with, uh, with, with Sykes was uh, to, to lead large-scale Six Sigma process improvement initiatives across multiple regions. Um, yeah, uh, and then, so that was my Sykes journey, again, sure. kind of the foundation. Uh, and, and since then, you know, I've been with multiple technology organizations right. like HP and Google, okay. um, and now at Intuit, but all are kind of focused on delivering 
great experiences to our customers. Do you think, are you unique or, or are you a rare breed to be in enterprises like that who differentiate by creating great experiences, but you you were there, right? You've taken the call, so you understand what it, what it takes. Is, is there something special about that? Is there enough of your experience in, in industry or is this something we need to we need to work on helping everyone sort of recognize and realize the, the power of, of the call, the interaction? Yeah, I would say that, you know, for you to be a great coach, you should know the game. You should have played the game, right? Uh, I, I, you know, and, 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 and I actually share this with my team and a lot of other teams within Intuit as well. You can come up with any strategy or any plan sitting in a conference room, but you're not going to get it right unless you actually go and experience what uh, the agent goes through right. and the customers go through. Right. Um, so for me, companies who have amazing strategy and have had a um, successful run, I, I guarantee you these two companies, especially the leadership, knows and have experienced what uh, an agent experiences on a daily basis as well as what a customer experiences on a daily basis. Perfect. So even today, again, going back to your question, you know, when I think of a solution, the you know I actually consider, uh, you know, uh, that you know that that I was very lucky that I was an agent for a year, so I can relate to what goes through an agent's mind. Yes, it's been 20 years, but that fundamental experience and that emotion, all of that, you know, kind of remains the same. I imagine that sticks with you. Yeah. You, you always have that in everything you do and every every uh, every program you kick off. Oh yeah, and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, and I also appreciate the job, right? For me, that is yeah. the toughest job in this customer service industry. Uh, I'm glad to hear you say that. I've, I've, I've seen it firsthand and, and I agree. So, so let's fast forward now <coughs> to today. Uh, because we are in a delivery center. Uh, first, talk to us a little bit about what your role is at Intuit, and then we'll get to why a center like this is so special. Sure, absolutely. So uh, at Intuit, um, I lead uh, partner management. So we, again, uh, we call uh, our customer service customer success, and we are in the process of transforming, uh, you know, the traditional mindset of customer care slash customer service to customer success. How can we start to think about making every interaction successful for the customer, not just answering the question, but beyond answering the question, what does it take to make them successful? Um, and, uh, and we rely on partners like Sykes uh, you know, to, to provide product support. Uh, we have majority of the product support provided through outsource partners like Sykes, and my team uh, is responsible and accountable for the overall relationship, footprint, uh, you know, and, and, and the holistic outsourcing uh, strategy for Intuit. So we are here and you spent, you presented earlier today, I saw you present to your team as well and give out awards for some of their contributions to this concept that Intuit calls a prosperity hub. And I have to say, I mean, this is genuine, it, it, you see you're passionate about it. You can just feel that, that it means something to you. And there is some backstory that you provided throughout the course of the day that I'd, I'd love you to share with us of just like, how did you come to this? Uh, how has it been championed? And, uh, and what are we doing today? And then I'd like to explore your goals for it in the future. So um, I came to US about uh, 12 years back. Um, so I was at HP uh, in Bangalore, a city of, I guess, 11 million. Uh, and HP decided to open a delivery center uh, in a small town in Arkansas, Conway, a city of 30,000 uh, population in those days. Right. Uh, so it was a very interesting transition to, you know, usually, uh, especially, you know, some of my colleagues from, from even in HP, when they were transitioning to U.S., you know, typical relocation uh, destination is, you know, the Bay Area, the New York, the L.A. Uh, you know, I actually consider myself lucky that I got an opportunity to go all the way to a community like Conway, Arkansas. And uh, I, I was there for three years and I have to say that I fell in love. I made some lifelong friends uh, and I've also developed a unique passion and appreciation for communities like Conway, Arkansas uh, for multiple reasons. One is the amount of talent that exists in these communities. And, you know, and I have to say that um, you know, there are mil there are hundreds of Conways uh, that are out there in this country that are yet to be discovered. 
Um, so one, there is an obviously amazing talent. The second one is passion and loyalty, right? So there's one thing about talent, which more, which specifically focuses on the qualification aspect. But just because you know somebody has a qualification doesn't mean that you know they can be a long-term employee. So there is a level of passion and loyalty that exists in these communities, and the close connectedness, right? It is a community. The third piece, and this is my favorite of all. When I was a customer serve, when I became a customer service agent, I was trained. I went through, I guess, 20 days of training, out of which 10 days were about how do you deliver great customer experience. But when you go to communities like these, customer service is ingrained in their culture. That's customer service. They, they do customer service in their day-to-day -day life, right? The way they talk to each other, the way they support each other. So these are three reasons why I, I fell in love with that community. Uh, and uh, when I joined into it, um, you know, into its mission is one of the reasons why I, 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 uh, I connect with the company at an emotional level. Our mission is powering prosperity around the world. Um, and a few years back, you know, we we realized that we have a huge opportunity. You know, we have a very large um, outsourced partner ecosystem. We onboard more than 20,000 uh, customer success experts on an annual basis. And, and, and we thought, what a cool opportunity for us to solve for the business, but at the same time, bring our mission to life by tapping into communities like, like Modest Town. You know, for example, the, the, the passion that you see on the floor, the energy, uh, you know, Ian, I, it can only be experienced. I know you've been here, you know, all day here. and You have to be here to truly feel it. Um, you can... You can see it in the eyes, you can hear it in the stories, and just the emotions of the people who share what work here means to them. That's right. I absolutely agree. That's right. And also, the other one thing I always call out is, you know, people talk to me about impact sourcing. Right? People ask me, oh, so Intuit is into impact sourcing. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes people ask me as if impact sourcing is something new. Impact sourcing has been around for multiple decades. I think where the, the concept of impact sourcing is evolving is that you know companies have always viewed doing good and delivering great business outcomes as two independent areas of focus. I, and that's where prosperity hubs are special from my perspective because it brings both together. You don't have to sacrifice your business outcomes to 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 do good. Or yeah, you know, so or the other other way around as well, right? So with prosperity hubs, I think I was sharing with you as well. We are seeing some amazing business outcomes. You know, if you think about attrition, that is one of the biggest challenges, uh, you know, in this industry, especially in onshore locations like U.S. Right. We are seeing 30 to 50 percent lower attrition in communities where we have prosperity hubs versus the other sites. Right. Also, from a customer experience perspective, again, because of that high level of retention, because of that loyalty, because of that connect con connection that these individuals have with Sykes brand or Intuit brand. Right the performance is significantly higher, in some cases up to 10 to 12% higher customer experience. That's tremendous. And as you said, I mean, if they, they stick around, you get retention. If they stick around, I imagine they, they continue to evolve and develop in their role, so they get better and better and they create that great experience. That's, that's amazing. That's right. So you and your background and your experience, because you had lived in a small town, saw the impact. Were you the one who brought the idea to into it? Was it there before you got here? What What was the history there? Yeah, and this is the greatest thing about Intuit and one of the reasons why um, I absolutely am in love with the company and with the mission of the company yeah. is that, you know, all 9,000 of us are Intuit, right? In some way, form or the other, we are asking ourselves, how do you power prosperity? Right, and, 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 and we actually, the answer to that is, is twofolded. We believe that we can power prosperity through our products. Uh, and if you think about our products, they are designed to solve, uh, uh, you know, and, and ease the financial situation and, and power prosperity to our customers. So that's the first area of focus is how do we power prosperity through our products? Sure. And then the other way we look at bringing our mission to life is powering prosperity through our actions. Okay. So. So Intuit is a company where everybody's always thinking about, hey, how can we you know, power prosperity through our actions? What else can we do? Right. And when we actually talked about, um, and again, I wouldn't say that it was just my idea, but you know, I was part of the core team where people are naturally in the same mindset you know, in terms of 
making a difference. And then when you just also apply the business outcome aspect of it, it you know, we got great support from, you know, senior executives like Mark, who's our chief customer success officer, Brad Smith, who's our chairman, Sasan, who's our CEO, and then the entire organization started to rally around. And, it, and your actions um, manifest in a few different ways. So your actions, as far as the, the partners you're working with, and you mentioned Sykes um, often, but you're working with others as well, other peers of ours in the space and opening um, prosperity hubs. You're also contributing to the community. So there was some reference to some academies that you're, you're supporting in the local communities. Can you tell me a little bit more yeah, about that? Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, let, so let me maybe unpack the whole Prosperity Hub uh, concept Perfect. as a whole, uh, because this is not just about creating jobs. You know, the way we think about it is job creation is absolutely the fundamental. We call it the anchor. Okay. Uh, but, but, but the way the Prosperity Hub is designed or strategized is in three layers. Uh, we call it, again, you know, we, we are working on the terminologies, but for ease of interpretation, the first one is called the anchor, okay. the second one is called the accelerator, and uh, the third one is called uh, um, the multiplier. Okay. So anchor faces nothing but into it, going into a community like Modest Town and mm -hmm. creating those 300, 400 jobs. Right. So that becomes an anchor in the community. Okay. It creates 300 jobs. It solves the immediate need. And then we are able to establish a connection with the community right. and also build that relationship with the community. Um, and then the second phase is accelerator. Okay. And what uh, we mean by that is beyond job creation, for a community to prosper for an extended period of time, you have to create an ecosystem. Just because you've created 300 jobs doesn't mean that this community is, is, has, you know, will have sustainable prosperity. Okay. The key is going to be how are we helping small businesses? How are we developing entrepreneurial skills, right? So that is where the, the, the second layer comes in. So, so we have our Intuit education team, our corporate responsibility team. They have, uh, you know, multiple programs that focuses on community success, which, which kind of uh, na narrows the focus into small businesses, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial skills, as well as uh, you know, student empowerment and financial awareness. Right. And once we get past that phase, and, and the, you know, uh, we're still working through the third phase, sure. the multiplier is beyond Intuit, how can we take Prosperity Hub outside the four walls of Intuit? There are so many companies, almost every single company that's out there, you know, you know they, they have similar passion to making a difference. Now, how can we start to create an alliance right. with those companies and truly multiply the impact yeah. And also, again, like I said, it's not just about creating jobs. You know, there are communities where we've created jobs, but the biggest barrier to further expansion of jobs is lack of infrastructure, like, like broadband. Right. Now, can we bring in, you know, a, a, an organization that, that can actually help us implement broadband in those communities so we can multiply the jobs, right? So that's how we think about it. So through partnership, you're, you're able to deliver other capabilities, regions, towns, cities might need. And then you're effectively open sourcing Prosperity Hub. That's right. Saying this isn't this isn't ours or just ours. This isn't something that we we want to just hold close to our vest. We want to share with you the methods, the models, the benefits of doing so. Absolutely. And and we've been um, over the, especially over the last few months, we've been very transparent about this. Yeah. You know, for example, last week, uh, Stacy Herring, you know, my manager and I, and along with my team, we were at the uh, at the Outsourcing World Summit, okay. uh, uh, IAOP, IAOP and, and, and uh, yeah, we actually presented Prosperity Hub, and, and we do this very often. We would love to partner with companies. We'd love to share, um, you know, if, if uh, any of your clients or any of the other organizations, absolutely. if they want to learn about Prosperity Hub model or even partner, uh, we'd, we'd absolutely you know, Certainly. love to partner. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it, it's it's important to us. It's meaningful. I, I have some of my own sort of personal background and history and exposure that makes impact sourcing and prosperity have concepts really interesting. Uh, and we'll share the information on on the on the webcast and the podcast so that people can learn more. I imagine you've got websites and other information yep, about yep. that. Absolutely. And just one, one thing to add, yeah. and, you know, uh, you know, oftentimes I get a question, which is, how do you 
shortlist communities. How do you select communities? So I thought you know, it would be great right. to maybe spend That's a couple great. of minutes on that. Yeah, um, so we, um, you know, so, so there are three primary criteria um, that we apply in order to, you know, kind of shortlist a community to be a prosperity hub community. And like I said, this is where, you know, it's a kind of a, 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 a combination of, you know, business success factors and community success factors. But our primary criteria is always talent. Where are, what, what are the communities that are out there that have great talent but lack opportunities? So, so, so that's our first lens. Um, and then uh, the second one is where are the communities that we can make a true difference and have an impact? And then the third criteria is um, what are the communities that are willing to partner with us? Because we need help and support from the communities right. in order for us to go and establish the anchor and be successful. Right. So these are the three criteria that we apply. Do you find the communities that have the talent that you can tap into or communities that may have been impacted by previous industries that have come and gone or companies that were there and, and struggled and closed? Is, is, that, is that where you find talent or is it just around where there are universities or what are the other indicators of talent? The answer is both. Okay. Uh, you know, in, even in our existing six prosperity hubs, we've had communities where, you know, there was, you know, coal was the primary source of employment. Right. And, you know, once the coal industry declined overnight, these communities lost thousands of jobs. Right. Right? And these are communities that have amazing talent, uh, you know, and, 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 and those are, uh, 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 those are absolutely part of the selection criteria as well. Perfect. But then we've also had communities that, Again, have great education system, but unfortunately, there is a there is a there is an accelerated population decline because you know the community is producing the talent, but because there are no opportunities, the only way that the the talent can find the the career that they need is is outside the community. Right. And, and they're not leaving because they want to; they're leaving because they have to. So yeah, exactly. Give them the chance to stay, you get that loyalty that you referred to earlier. That's right. Yep. So you mentioned you've got six prosperity hubs now in the network. What are your plans going forward? Yeah, uh, big plans. Um, so we have five prosperity hubs in the U.S. as of today, and we have one in Canada. Uh, collectively, these prosperity hubs have created 1,500 jobs. 1,500, um, Yep, uh, and, uh, uh, and Sykes is a, is a very large part of that prosperity hub ecosystem today. Um, and in the future, we, we declared that over the next 18 months, uh, we will create an additional 1,500 jobs uh, in these prosperity hub communities. Okay. Looking for new communities as well, or is it the six that you found so far, or you you want to? Yeah, well, our 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 strategy is to, you know, obviously, um, powering prosperity across the the globe right. wherever possible. Right. Um, so so the communities that we are in right now, we feel that we've laid the foundation. We still have a lot of lot more work to do in the existing communities, but not specifically on job creation. Okay. It's more around how do we create a career ladder for these individuals to grow and 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 and, and continue uh, and grow their earning potential, yeah. and also partner with communities to create small business success programs and, and entrepreneurial skill development. Right. But in terms of creating new jobs, uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, through the selection criteria we have, uh, you know, we, we identify newer communities where we can go. And also, like I mentioned, we are starting to think about global, uh, you know, we are in Canada, but we are now starting to think about UK and, you know, okay. what next. Yeah, that's where I was going to go next, because prosperity around the world, so where else around the world? Because you do generally hear, especially impact sourcing is looking at... Uh, Africa and other areas. So you, you mentioned so UK. There are other areas you're looking at as well. Yeah, see, that, you know, actually, you bring up a, you know, that's another uh, eye-opening lesson for us through this journey. Is you're right. When you think about impact sourcing, you know, I am from India. I grew up in India, and I, you know, and, and there's a huge opportunity, and we all know about the opportunities in places like South Africa. Again, great talent, lacks opportunities. But the biggest learning for us is. Impact sourcing need not only be in those locations. It could be right in your backyard, uh, you know, and, and, and again, where there is amazing talent like Morristown and, and some of our other prosperity hubs, but lacks opportunities. Bala, thank you so much. To hear your story, to understand where you came from that gave you this unique perspective that, like you said, you could have an impact uh, domestically, globally, internationally, big city, little city, and that you are living that passion and with you know, with the power of Intuit and the brand and the growth of, of such a sort of a leading company, 
you're able to, to truly have a positive impact on communities across the nation is, is an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing it. Thank you for joining me on One Take and, uh, and good luck with everything. Looking forward to being a partner with you um, for a long time into the future. Awesome. No, thank you, Ian. Thank you for having me and thanks for giving me the opportunity. Super. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.